تلویش دیش کالا چی داوومو میکاره کیجی او وقتی خواه با گریزی پزار شاکی ملاج لش کرال اکی نو نخ مجبوری نسته سو کنی ملاسو There were groups of Taliban that were involved, so how they're fighting their own groups, that would be a question mark. After the Taliban took control of Afghanistan, they announced a complete ban on opium cultivation and trade in April 2022. The reality on the ground suggests they face an uphill battle, especially in Helmand province, as the Voice of America found out. VOA journalists traveled to Poppy Ridge Helmand province for a rare and exclusive look at how the opium trade is faring there. Why Helmand? Afghanistan produces most of the world's opium, more than 80%. Most of that, more than half, comes from Helmand province alone. Our cameras went to this bazaar where farmers openly sell their opium to traffickers in the Musakala district. For their personal safety, we are blurring their faces and not using their real names. Every Thursday, thousands come to Landi Nawa Market. In every corner of this market, along with fruits, carrots, and corn, livestock, and household necessities, farmers sell their bags full of opium. VOA went there after the Taliban's announcement banning the cultivation, selling, and use of opium and all illicit drugs. The Taliban gave farmers a few months grace period so they could harvest that year's poppy already in the ground. The ban announcement drove a major spike in the price of opium as people feared a future shortage. Tor John is a farmer from Musakala district. He brought this year's opium haul to sell at the market. He carries two small bags of opium stored in his motorcycle. Many drug dealers come to this market to buy opium from farmers like Tor John. Drug transactions, like everything in the market and most of this area of Afghanistan, are conducted with Pakistani rupees. Under the sweltering blaze of Helmand's summer heat, dozens of farmers haggle with traders over opium prices. The deals take place everywhere. Many drug dealers avoid our cameras, but this one wanted to speak with us. He lives in Helmand and claims to be a mid-level drug dealer. 
The dealer comes to buy the farmer's opium at this weekly market and delivers it to bigger traffickers, men who use it to make heroin, then smuggle it over the borders. They measure opium by mon, which equals four kilos and 400 grams. Farmers from surrounding areas of North Helmand bring opium to Landy Nawa for sale. People here talk about Helmand's long poppy history. Drought conditions mean those who are not near the Helmand River have trouble accessing water. Pir Mohammed is 70. He says farmers grow poppy and run their opium businesses out of necessity. <laughs> These impoverished farmers see no other choice but to live off of opium sales. The result is a steady stream of dangerous drugs flowing into the rest of the world. Javed Kaim served in the former government as deputy minister of counter-narcotics. He explains why Helmand works well for poppy cultivation. Since all these ages, uh, people were trained uh, because this, this poppy and when, when the cut happens and when they're collecting the, the poppy uh, nectar, it's a, it's a uh, labor intensive uh, time. Uh, and they could do that in Helmand. They knew how to do it, and they could also find people for it. So uh, they, they could have people from Iran, they could have people from Pakistan, they could have people from other provinces to come. The United Nations says that in 2022, Afghanistan produced 6,200 metric tons of opium. 73% of it came from the southwestern provinces, most of that from Helmand. If there is an international market, if there is a demand for it, there will be supply for it. And unfortunately, still there is a demand, the prices are still high. Um, uh, it will not be easy. Uh, I don't see a, a lot of potential in, in stopping it in the near future. In addition to markets, farmers also sell their opium to traders and traffickers in their homes. These five bags of opium are the harvest of the 2022 crop. This farmer of Musakala shows his opium to a local smuggler to sell. Both the farmer and trafficker haggle over the price of opium. I 
Sen de tele. Sol bakar yap ne ki? Matla kırpı bağındı uğrulu, sualı. O uzadı drana kırdı diyor. Sarı pida kayi, ay şamba da, tarazik şam kayi rata. La tosu. This farmer worries about the future of his poppy business. After weighing five bags and all the back and forth, the deal is done. This farmer has been growing poppy for 60 years. Like many, he takes out loans to grow poppy. After, he must pay back the lender, usually a trafficker. The business of the international drug market starts here from such modest mud houses. These farmers are the first stop in the multi-billion dollar drug market and the lowest paid. The UN estimates the drug trade brought Afghanistan anywhere from 1.8 to 2.7 billion dollars last year. Drugs are smuggled out of the country by three routes, through Iran, Pakistan, and two Central Asian countries from the northern provinces of Afghanistan. Helman shares an extended border with Pakistan and is also close to Iran. These long open borders provide important pathways for smugglers to move drugs outside Afghanistan. Mullah Abdul Haq Akhanzada is the Taliban's Deputy Minister of Interior for Counter Narcotics. <laughs> The no one denies that poppy is king in Helmand. One-fifth of the province's total agriculture land is devoted to poppy cultivation, and the farmers' economic livelihoods mostly depend on poppy. According to the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, the UNODC, in the last five years, an average of more than 100,000 hectares have been planted with poppy in Helmand. In 2022, 122,000 hectares grew poppy in Helmand. In 2021, it was nearly 110,000 hectares. For 2020, nearly 116,000. Most poppy is concentrated in four districts of Helmand province. These include Nadali, Narul Saraj, Musa Kala, and Kajiki districts. Overall, poppy is cultivated on more than 100,000 hectares in the province every year. Ilman dear, you got a rouser, it's the tribun, 
په افغانستان کې وبل یو داسې غټ خلاص هم ځکه وبل ولایت ته نه چې هم وبل ولري هم شاوا ولري هم او اوار هم ځکه ولري دا یوازې هلمند بو چې دې لپاره دا برابر و نو په دې وجه باندې د هلمند هر فصل یوازې دا نه چې د تاریخ ډیر دي نور فصلونه هم داسې غټ فصلونه دي Sangin district in northern Helmand witnessed heavy fighting in the last two decades. It was both a controlled and contested area. Now there is no war and normal life has returned here. Sangin has vast agricultural lands. Those near the Helmand River and the Kajiki Dam can irrigate their land, but more rural areas suffer from drought. Poppy cultivation has been practiced here for decades. In this part of Helmand, Sangin farmer Aladad has leased a well in the drought-stricken land. Poppies and other crops are irrigated with well water, but sometimes they spend more on cultivation than they make. This farmer supports a family of 16. Aladad kept his opium from last season's poppy harvest. He expects that this opium will fetch a higher price later. انا په دغه لکو یو نیم لک چې په دې غړو زیدا ته پلا وازس ول ول په دریا لکه سو په څلور لکه سو هغه لبر زمر نو کې تمه و چې د غبسې بر بعد پورو غړ پو جاو کدار کمی کل دا وس چې مانه په 50 شپته تراسي او زمر د کور خره پیدا د ولا کوم په یو لار د وکي غړ په وباسو Waiting may work for Aladad. In its November 2022 report, the UNODC said opium prices spiked after the Taliban's poppy ban. The price nearly doubled from 116 to 203 dollars for one kilo of opium. In total, farmers made an estimated $1.4 billion in 2022, growing opium. The poppy farmers in Helmand alone made $733 million. With the steep rise in food prices, an ordinary farmer now must spend 70% of his income on food alone. Wally John farms in the Kandard village of Musakala. He says that poppy has been cultivated here since he was born. Like many Afghan farmers, he grows other crops in between poppy growing seasons. After the last poppy harvest, he grew basil, corn, and cotton. Wally John says that he sold his opium at a good price, but the future is uncertain. Like Wally John, poppy farmers in Helmand worry about the Taliban government's ban on poppy cultivation. The Taliban, who once funded their fighting by taxing the opium trade in Helmand, 
now says it will enforce its ban on cultivation and use of the narcotic. They consider it important for gaining international legitimacy. The local Taliban government in Helmand said that they have eradicated this past autumn's poppy crop and cleared hundreds of hectares of land. Marmul in Sangin district is known for its old fortress, which dates back 3,000 years. The Marmul Bazaar was one of the most important markets for drug deals when the Taliban was fighting the previous government. Now, the Taliban's Sangin district governor visited the Jama Mosque of Marmul to talk about the Taliban leader's drug ban. <laughs> It's not just the farmers who say that life will be difficult without poppy. All businessmen associated with the farmers, including the imam of the mosques and shopkeepers, are used to receiving money from the poppy economy. Kari Ahmad has come to Sangin from Nauzad. He says he is the village imam there. Kari Ahmad says muktadis, or people who pray with him in his mosque, have paid him usher, a kind of tithe in opium. Will he take poppy as zakat in the coming year? Hellman farmers say they want alternative livelihood choices. They want new job options and seeds for crops other than poppy. Sangin farmer Al Adad says the Taliban government needs to help farmers find alternatives. The world has not yet recognized the Taliban government, and most of the international community has cut off aid to them. 
A 2021 report by the Special Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstruction, or SIGAR, states that the U.S. alone spent more than $8 billion to prevent opium production and trafficking in Afghanistan over 20 years beginning in 2001. Despite this enormous investment, none of the efforts by the international partners, including the U.S. and the Afghan government, resulted in lasting reduction in poppy cultivation and opium production. Akhanzada expressed optimism that the Taliban can eliminate poppy, where it has been cultivated for decades. Javed Kaim says it's a tall order, considering the Taliban has been complicit in the drug trade. As I also said, there were groups of Taliban that were involved, so how they're fighting their own groups, that would be a question mark. The UNODC says the Taliban successfully enforced a ban for one year back in 2001. Meanwhile, the Taliban continues to move away from the world's human rights norms, especially when it comes to women and girls. International aid groups pulled out in protest. The Taliban's actions mean international aid will not be coming soon. This at a time when over half of the country's population lives below the poverty line, and nearly 20 million Afghans are identified as acutely food insecure. For now, the world can only watch and wait. Using satellite images this spring, the UNODC will be able to see how much poppy was planted last fall. One thing that is certain, an enforced ban will deal the hardest blow to the people in Helmand, the farmers, the ones who produce the most poppy in the country.